Okay. Uh, so that will be in English, right? Yeah. So, okay. So yeah, this is uh, Jan Kulvai and Tomasz Gawenchak, and they don't probably need introduction because they work here. <laughs> and I, I promised Cyril that I will introduce them anyway. So this is like. Yeah, so good morning, welcome. Morning. Uh, our plan for this this, uh, this this seminar is basically go like very briefly through the same slides which we did last time. So just like people have them fresh in their working memory, which should take about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. There are some new results, so it's not completely everything the same. So we will maybe talk a bit more about the new results. Okay. Um, I think it will be better if this like a brief like recapitulation will go without questions. Um, then uh, maybe you can open some time for discussion. And then we'd like to get um, to what we actually want to work on, or like what our uh, like research questions we, we want to be working on already, or like want to work on. And uh, my plan for this place is like you will kind of briefly start with the end of what we want to get to, <laughs> then open the space for discussion, and then if there will be time, you can go through the interaction and so on. The main idea is like we hope in this way there will be time to actually get to the conclusions of the talk, and there will be at the same time space for discussion. So, yeah, the problem I think is similar. Um, yeah, what's used to about air progress comes in the risk. And then we'll get to what I just talked about. So the metaphor here is something like uh, we can think about some landscape of human competence, and there is this like water or like sea is rising metaphor is by Hans by Hans Moravets. This illustration is from 2018, so at that point like uh, AI saw to go, and since then. There are like many things which uh, like machine learning systems are right now able to do, for example, generate text or convert like textual descriptions like this, like this into computer code. But when we then uh, like execute the computer code, uh, you can basically create a simple <laughs> game like this maze just by like describing the maze in like a relatively natural language like at canvas, like at score counter, at map, and so on. Uh, this is image generation state of art. What we have seen just before the talk is uh, a toy model, which is like open to public. This, this large model is unfortunately not open to public, but uh, it's like able to understand like pretty, like, I think it's like pretty creative in some sense. It's able to modify images. Also, I think like translation is basically like by people, like translation is probably at a better level than like uh, what uh, a media and professional translator would do without, without machine learning. The rest of the professionals are not using it as well. But uh, apart from that, if you want to uh, translate the technical manual, I think people will, will do better than like a media and professional translator. People don't know it. Okay. So this is like actually latest results, which is like the fast language model from Google, which is able to, for example, explain jokes. And the thing which is like which is new from the from the last uh, talk is Geto, which is a multi-model AI. Um, maybe Tomas, you can describe it, and I can, I can I'll try to make the video play in the, in the meantime. Yeah, so uh, DeepMind created a model that is uh, that it can uh, work in different modalities on very, very many different tasks. So this is like the video is kind of like an example of what all it can do. It can, you can see many video games it plays, uh, 2D and 3D. It's also manipulating simulated robot hands. Uh, what you don't see in the video is it can also like do something like GPT-2. So it can, can chat with you, it can, it can complete text and uh, do simple text tasks. It can also do visual tasks like identify images or annotate that, that this, what the picture contains. And uh, 
the surprising thing is that this is this is only one model. Like so previously, people built special models that could do like several of those tasks usually, but maybe ten of them and only one in one domain. But here they basically took a text model and somehow just encoded how the robot move hand uh, robot handles and uh, how the picture looks and and put it into the into the same model and it works quite well. Like it's it's not it's not state of the art, but it's still surprisingly good. And what is also surprising is that it's only about one uh, one billion parameters uh, in terms of like size of the model, which is about one percent size of GPT three. And GPT three is not even the largest model today. People are building probably one trillion parameter models. So this is actually a very small model and is still like surprisingly capable. Uh, and this came up like last Wednesday or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. so this is basically about like trends in compute. Uh, now this, this is on like logarithmic scale. It's basically how much uh, floating point operations is like used to train the models. This is two from 2017 to roughly 2022. So this is the this was like before like the last target file was like the latest published thing with like more than like uh, yeah and they're like at least like uh, five hundred billion parameters. What's interesting um, is that capabilities basically grow with compute. So. Um, the bigger models are just better in, in basically everything. And also the compute gets cheaper, like uh, roughly by one order every five years. So unless you predict uh, there is some like sudden change in this in this trend, which like holds for like after the last 20 years, it seems like uh, the default prediction should be the compute will get still cheaper. Um, What's uh, also like super interesting, and it's something which people didn't, didn't expect and like didn't predict, like, or, like most experts like, didn't predict like, seven years ago, is basically you get emerging capabilities just with scaling the model. So this is the this is the same model uh, in in some like structure on like what like human insights were put inside, and this is just like roughly nine or like eight times like increased uh, size. And the model like exhibits basically it's like doing some sort of a inductive like reasoning where it just doesn't work if the model is like small, but like this is a large model, like it's able to work correctly solve this solve sort of uh, text problems. So like while this was the state in 2018, I think like currently it's like more like this. <laughs> so yeah, I think the human reaction was sort of predicted by Kyle like people are like, oh, like this is not a real intelligence, this is not the real reasoning. Like the I don't know, like the, the models are still not able to write as good books as Carl Chapek, or they are like not able to like prove theorems as good as like as well as like the best people in their fields and so on. But uh, I think this is like ultimately not uh, that uh, important. It's just like important to notice the to notice the trends, and uh, yeah, like uh, it's also probably good like noticing that like there are many things which people believe will be will prove to be like extremely difficult for for machine learning, and uh, it turned out. And also, a lot of people expected like we will need, we will need some like completely new like insights into like how the algorithms are constructed. <laughs> But it seems basically like scaling of size works for quite a few things. So, how do we get to like the problem of like AI alignment or like why we believe this is like uh, pretty important? So, by alignment, I roughly mean like the, the tools uh, which we are using or like the systems we are using, do what we want them to do. So uh, I think this is uh, like a simple conceptual sketch. Like the systems can be like differently powerful and like differently aligned. So like a hammer is like not particularly like necessarily well aligned with, with me, but it's not super powerful. Same goes for pocket calculator. It becomes more interesting in uh, case of systems like Google, which are actually pretty powerful. 
and I am kind of yeah I kind of hope the Google search is like sufficiently aligned with me that it's trying to show me for example relevant results as opposed to like manipulating me to some political views <laughs> and basically in the power in pieces if the tools get like not aligned or misaligned uh, it could be it could be pretty bad why alignment seems hard so one it's difficult to it seems like difficult to like explicitly specify what we want, want. <laughs> so people kind of had this idea that this could be pretty difficult like for a long time actually now i think like more people are like feeling slightly more optimistic about it because it seems the language models often like understand concepts in a way which is like broadly compatible with humans mm -hmm. and also for example this examples are like great for alignment and interpretability because it's not that the model will just uh, tell you the answer is a but there is like this like reasoning which is like human inspectable or like human understandable yeah so the next uh, next direction which which people try is like real learning which is like uh, basically trying to like learn what you want in in some sense in like econ style in like the from the behavior which like people actually manifest or there are different ways how to make the how to make the AI systems to do what we want one is like imitation learning you can maybe if you have a human and a robot you could just like show to the robot like how you do something and the robot would try to imitate like similarly how human childs work so like each of these mm, approaches seem to have like pretty big problems for example, the imitation learning is unclear if it's competitive because we ultimately hope as many of these tasks humans like the the, the like the AI systems will get like superhuman performance. So it's also an example like if you would do some like industrial tasks somewhere, it's not clear if an industrial robot should like copy your movements, probably no. Well, a better example, even better example might be the play, uh, the game of Go, where when you're training an AI, you are not just hoping the AI will, will imitate your your like the best players, but to actually beat them. For but for that, it cannot just imitate them. It actually needs to come up with new strategies, as AlphaGo did. Yeah. So <laughs> Go with specification problems. Uh, this is in some sense uh, a problem which like. Humans were writing stories for a very long time. It's like all short of cheese. I just wanted to highlight that uh, some of the like uh, old cheese folklore and old clients actually contain, contains like technically sort of correct descriptions of some of the alignment problems. Yeah, this is just a funny story. Like, well, there's like examples how the how in this case the system like plans to maximize the the reward by a like very unexpected way, which where the boat like keeps like crashing. So so here the humans like specify like you should maximize the score, but like most humans would maximize the score by like trying to uh, complete the race like uh, fastest. But the AI discovered actually this mirror is like collecting this like collecting these rewards is like more rewarding so <coughs> this is maybe uh like less like example based less on like games and so on so you can imagine like social network algorithm uh optimizing engagement and um engagement means something like how much uh, like different posts will like draw like different people's attention so let's say that the algorithm is basically like just like searching through some like large space of solutions to this and discovers that uh, this reward of engagement could be improved by showing the user's content which will make them like more predictable where like the claim is like for example <coughs> if someone is like uh, i don't know someone becomes like infused with some like for example like right wing like um i don't know like anti-immigration or like like very like excited uh like uh, political opinion like voting for i don't know like uh camera or like something similar like it, it, it could be like more predictable what the user will want 
So the side effect of, of uh, this optimization can be, for example, disruption of vertical process. So it's not entirely just to know this is not it's not entirely clear to what extent this is what's actually happening. It's not a uh, claim this is this is reality, but uh, hypothetically this is like entirely plausible. Yeah. So how bad this will go? So yeah, there's this risk. Uh, yeah, it seems possible, and if the systems like become like powerful enough, this can actually pose like an existential risk. Um, yeah, so what are humans trying to do with this? So there's there's this like new but uh, fast growing field of element research. Currently, it's probably a like, few hundred people, maybe something like a couple hundred in this. So so the main directions uh, is yeah. So there's uh, there are some people like uh, trying to work on governance aspects where the the yeah, basically, how we can make the companies like developing these systems like maybe maybe do safe things or like be aligned with what we may want as a society. Different part is of the research is like trying to get like uh, more like conceptual clarity, where it's with, with many of the words I used here, like it's like objectives and alignment and so on. It's uh, it's the case that. Uh, we kind of some intuitive understanding what, what we want. We would, for example, want the A systems like not to like manipulate us, but we actually need a definition, for example, manipulation precise enough that someone can code a training, uh, like a training procedure for the model, which is like optimizing for it. With the like large language model, which we've like uh, shown before, the, the models have like well defined objectives. They are trying to predict like what's the most likely next completion of the text based on some like huge purpose of text like scripts from internet. So this is well defined objective. But if you want objectives like uh, the model shouldn't lie or the, should, the model shouldn't like hallucinate like uh, like alternative histories or or in uh, like more like subtle things like the model should not like the outputs of the model shouldn't like. Try to like manipulate the user, for example. It's like less clear what we want, uh, or like it's not the level of clarity, it's not at the level that you can like just like write, like this is the objective, like the model should should uh, should try to optimize. Yeah. And there is a lot of technical proposals. Mm, there's um, like this like link contents and overview of development of them. Which are which are focusing on the problem how to align uh, basically safe advanced systems, where, where the basic uh, generic question is like how we can how we can this is uh, this alignment problem is kind of simple if the systems are so simple that I understand what they are doing and how they are doing it, but uh, as we noted before like the the state of art models have for example five hundred billion parameters. So I think at this point it becomes a problem, maybe it's like a similar to like neuroscience or something, where the like obviously everything what the model is doing is like encoded in these like 500 billion parameters, but it doesn't give me any like real understanding what the model is doing if I if I just yeah, have this like huge list of numbers, and uh, so like we can't like it's like pretty easy to assume that like in future and also like basically now. We are like already unable to understand what the models are doing internally. There's another like direction of research, which, for example, Standa uh, was talking here a few months ago, was talking about like understanding what the models are actually doing. It's not a pretty big problem. Yeah. So, so the question is like how we can make, how we can solve this problem, like doing the tools uh, do what we want them to do in the in, in cases when they are like more powerful in the domain than us and also we don't understand what they are doing and we also are like unable or like we don't know how to really really well specify like what we want them to do but the main problem is like some goals seem to be like really easy to specify like increase the amount of money on like uh, i don't know on, on my trading account or something but uh, this is probably <laughs> there are probably like many things which we want where like this like naive and hard optimization for some for some problems could be like pretty dangerous or like negative like this in the case of the social network. Okay, yeah, so this was in some sense concept like some like what are the main like directions like people are working from. 
yeah, when they are working on it, yeah, there's like a bunch of things to do. Um, yeah, like in academia, it's uh, like Cambridge, Oxford, so uh, Berkeley, yeah, like um, interestingly, a lot of the lot of the um, technical research is like now done in in companies which are often structured a bit between like uh, uh, between like academia and like classical like companies like DeepMind or like Entropic. So this is in some sense like how research labs. The reason for it is uh, like training the models, which we are showing here, is like actually pretty expensive. But if you want to train like a large model with like 500 billion parameters on each amount of data, like training a simple single model could cost, for example, $10 million, <laughs> which or puts more. it like beyond or like or more, which puts it like beyond the reach of like academic uh, like academic places basically. Which means that if you want to like if if you are a research scientist who wants to work like directly with like developing these models, it's probably good to work in one of these three places, for example. And even if you are in now in Oxford English comfort, like the universities just like can't afford to like spend and now ten million dollars on like training one model. Also, it's probably worth noting like why the why these companies have like so much money because this is like obviously. Obviously, like stuff which uh, is able to like to do like language-based reasoning on this level is like extremely like commercially uh, uh, like applicable. I think here here with the with the with the metaphor with the flooded landscape, I think people sometimes think about it. Okay, let's look at human performance. But I think it's often good to ask like what what like what like how good is like median human. I think if you if you just like uh, take like here like random random uh, humans like walking on the on the street like here in front of CPS, I'm not entirely sure like <laughs> whether whether they would be like below or like above the like performance. performance. And uh, in some sort in some sense, the economy is like mostly based on or like large part of the like human economy is based on like actual like. Like more like on median humans, rather than <laughs> on uh, like uh, I don't know the top mathematicians and so on. Yeah. So so this leads the these companies to actually are like getting quite a lot of money to like develop this model. So there is this like loop of the models growing and this field getting more attention. You want to add? Yeah, I want to just say that like not only the economy is based on the uh, on median humans, but it's based on their on systems built out of humans. So the question, so this is also one of the approach we'll, we'll talk about. But uh, that if we already have something in a model in a domain which performs as well as a median human, then there is a chance that you can actually compose multiple of those those models already to have something uh, something more competent as as you would have a system made of uh, median humans in the in the domain still like. Yeah. yeah, so this was a brief, brief recap from last time. So I think there's now time to comment on this, which is more like more not about like what you want to do, but basically like describing the state of art and state of the world. Yeah. I was just wondering when you're showing the, the landscape, you know, like with the yeah. different capacity and how they're flooded and like, yeah. you know, like, used by the AI. I was actually wondering because you know obviously this, this is a landscape that is like sort of like you know like grown by people from academia, so they put themselves on the top. <laughs> you know that's 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 what the AI development will show that like if like I am better replaceable than you know my neighbor who can like you know fix a rusty car or fashion models. I think I think this is the case. <laughs> this is the case for example for example for programmers. I think that it because you have so much data. Uh, I mean for program programming you don't need any robotics. You just it's just software and there is so much data on it. Mm -hmm. Both like the code online and you know Stack Overflow and all those resources. So for example programming even though it's Considered like more difficult than modern craft, if, if you would view it as a craft, uh, it's probably more in more danger than yeah, coupling. I think you are you are like quite right. Like I mean, I copied the like the image from Hans Morowitz, and I think it like exhibits this like biases where like mm -hmm. air research is believe the last thing to be replaced is like air research. But I would expect like I don't know like physiotherapy being like replaced later. I, I think there are like quite a few reports where like people are like, actually like trying to dive deep into this 
And it seems like one category of jobs, which is probably like not going to be replaced by like machine learning systems, like soon is, for example, jobs which are like kind of like low paid yeah. and like different <laughs> on like physical scales. Like if someone is like uh, a really good, like massive, like it's not that they'll be like replaced by robots like anytime soon. But it's not, it's also like the backbone of like economy. And I agree, like some like many sources of like programming or like manipulating data, like are probably like easier to easier to like automatize like using machine learning systems. But yeah, I think it's like pretty complicated. Like also there is like I don't know, with quite many like time drivers. So basically, it seems there's some default where like if the safety of the like driving systems is like below the threshold, like no one will like, no like any system will die if attack. But once it gets, I don't know, like fifty percent, like above the threshold, it's pretty likely that in a few years, like all of them will be like, yeah. like getting replaced. So, yeah, there is there is also like uh, it would be you we would probably see more of the uh, like simpler, conceptually simpler, but mainly mainly harder jobs being replaced if evolution of robotics was faster than than AI, which like many people expected, I don't know, 10, 10 or fifteen years ago. Uh, but it just turns out that evol uh, like evolving robotics is for our for our current civilization seems to be harder or it's less motivated than uh, than evolving AI. Uh, 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 and it's sort of like hardware like limited. Yeah, I think in some sense it's hardware limited. Also, there is a question. I mean, I think there is some basically it's possible there is some like uh, like threshold around like. If you are able to make a cheap humanoid robot, which is like able to like replace a lot of factory work, mm -hmm. it's possible that this will be. <coughs> but I think currently the technology is not there yet, and also there's a question of costs, where in some sense like humans are like quite cheap. Like if you if you compare the cost of one of the like you've probably seen you can you can show them like the Atlas like the Boston Robotics like Atlas. Robot, which is like pretty agile and able to jump and do all sorts of things. <laughs> if you look on the price tag and you look on the price tag of, I don't know, like uh, factory workers in India, it's like currently it's like much, much cheaper to just like hire, yeah. hire people. But uh, if I don't know, this changes and uh, like the like human robots will start to get like mass produced, like you, you can get like. At least, like replacements can come up. But then it feels like people also like are sort of aware that, like, you know, we, or I can imagine that, like, you know, with human aid robots, I mean, like, you know, it's cool, it's like, you know, all the sci fi literature is about. Yeah. But, you know, in certain sense, like, you know, like, there's a like production effectivity, it can be, you know, like, sort of like, you know, like a local optimum. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. We are definitely not involved, like, you know, to making, to making cuts. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I think what's what's going on here is like there is this like all like the legacy environments which were like optimized for humans. And if you can just like make one one to one replacement, it's like like you don't have to deal with like all this like baggage. But if you if you look on the videos from I don't know, like some like automated warehouses, yeah, they are definitely not building like human robots, but they are, for example, building these pots which like lift packages and it's like a swarm of like insects like delivering stuff. Yeah, so so I think yeah, again this is like very, I think the main 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 question here or like the main point here I think is like uh, it seems like the robotics is the, we are like as a civilization we are not putting that not much effort into robotics but it's probably also the less dangerous part of it and the less powerful part of it like what makes like humans like nowadays like more powerful is like not like physical strength but like more some like mental abilities and so on so. The robotic side is like interesting, but not necessarily the crucial part. Yeah, I, I suggest yeah. to call the replacement of robots with humans stormtrooper effect, because it's what happened in Star Wars, right? They they found out uh, that like having uh, cheap human clones is actually it's like actually cheaper, cheaper than it's cheaper and more effective than using uh, robots. Yeah, I think it's not entirely realistic. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I'd, I'd be curious about uh, if you can think about other examples and domains where, uh, which are like similarly easy to replace. If you, have, if you have something which is very intelligent, if you have like a very intelligent AI, and you don't need any robotics, like programming was one example, or web design could be a, a, other examples. So, what what examples could you uh, do you think there there are? I'm just like trying to get 
new ideas. Like uh, that would be easy to replace. That would be like if you if you had a really smart AI for that domain, but didn't have you know very good robotics. So what are other domains of what humans do that could be easily replaced if you really had a strong AI? Some parts of management, it, uh, if, uh, uh -huh. I would like to restructure all the big company, yeah, so uh, it could draw me a new uh, chart how to. Uh, to... Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the way to accomplish this is, is going to be success is that the Western companies are delegated like mid level management bureaucracy here and mm -hmm. not the highest level of, of, of administration, but maybe the mid level. And I think that's the most replaceable one. <laughs> so, in, in you mean like our, our niche in the globalization might be one of the more endangered. So, actually, this is in this direction. I don't know whether maybe, maybe I will be saying the same thing as you are saying, but uh, what all was was surprising for me that there is this stock market that this sort of people are putting real money there and this is creating some something it should be done by computers you know there, there are all these people earning money on stock market it's, it's unnecessary it should be modeled somehow on the computers and they will determine the price of the contracts what so, is stock market is determining the price of the contracts i think this already happened it's, it's already it's, happened like most of the oh no, it is not happening there are still these people who are earning you know millions of dollars by operating this stock market but they are mostly they are mostly operating the ais like people uh, i mean there there are definitely experts like hundreds of experts worldwide who are operating hedge funds and they are doing well i'm not sure why it is so there are still some expertise to be used but if you imagine people who do so called day trading they are mostly losing money to to the quantitative trading which is done by ais and i think that most of the uh, most of the bigger companies are sort of setting kind of the high level strategy for the computers this is how they are making money am, am i correct or yeah, like almost like all trades, like if you looked on individual trades in stock markets, like the first approximation they are done by computers. There, it's, not, there it's not that that most of the days would be some human sitting behind the keyboard and like hitting sell. And like people who try to do this, like on average, like lose money, like a like large majority of them who try to like over, over outsmart the ecosystem of the, the so algorithms. So the, the, the human based hedge funds. So Typical economist who invests into an index. Like or, or, or no, you are creating equilibrium, some sort of equilibrium. Here, these molecules, they create equilibrium very easily. Yeah. Why it is not possible to do it on stock market without somehow intervening with people at all? The computer, but it's, it's, like, it's like, okay, so how is the market? It, how it is possible to earn this money on the stock market? <laughs> 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 it's really it's not. not. People that are the the companies, uh, this I understand, but they are asking how to replace people, so this is what I mean. Yeah, but yes. people, people were mostly replaced in like trading. Like like people, like how people like earn money, like for like how large hedge funds like earn money on stock market. One is like, by in, investing into like stock, like into like indices, like you buy the whole market and you hope the whole market will go up. This is like how like saying the individual people invest. Mm -hmm. Then you have like people who are confused and who try to pick like 10 stocks and like every week they make some trades. This is typically like worse than if they just like bought the whole market. And then there are like huge hedge funds, which are like, like the largest, the largest of them are basically doing algorithmic trading. So they are like just like setting up the computer programs to trade. There are, there are some, there is some like human trading going on, but the way how to think of it is the traders are trying to, basically they are trying to extract uh, like predictability of the market. So, so to say that there is like, that the humans have no role in this, it would be like roughly equivalent to saying that like humans have like no ability to predict like anything about the future of the companies which would be difficult if there was like to assume there's like no niche for humans that would be one one way for humans to make money is that they, they, they can gossip so if you have a friend of someone who told you 10 days ago the governor who would make a lot of money on the stocks and the ground and but that usually requires him to have to get to know a secret about other humans and what's this below them on the money so I guess humans have some comparative advantage. This is how 
and investors make money. They know each other and they gossip and they, they know secrets and they keep taking their own. Investment. Yeah, I, I will say this is this is a good example in the sense that it is becoming more automated. Uh, also, the extraction of knowledge from about like gossip and stuff is also getting more automated. That they are like automatically scanning Twitter and processing that. So that that's I, I think I think that's a good example. And we, we are it's increasingly more automated. So what they are saying that the equilibrium we might be getting will be on a computer base. I think this is actually not that far. But my understanding was that the market somehow, you know, this computer based influence, the market is able to, to, to use it. Yeah. So, for example, market land that, that people are using this by school equation. So, somehow, after a while, if you were Working yes. according yes. to Black Skull, it was wrong. You have to do something different. Yeah, yeah. basically. So yeah. basically, if you discover some regularity about the market, so you can make, you are able to buy it by definition almost. You are able to make money by extracting it. So the equilibrium is like any predictability gets extracted out of the market. <laughs> How the system is structured, you have specialists in like extracting predictability on the range of like fractions of a second. Like you have different players who are like extracting predictability on the scale of like I don't know 10 seconds different players are extracting predictability on the time scale of days what what like friend who is like working in one of the like huge companies like uh, in this uh, told me like uh, he was like uh, actually the biggest one I think now so so like they say that like there is still a lot of like predictability which is extracted by humans on like large time scales like years but on, if you if you are a human and you are trying to like extract the predictability on time scale of seconds, like basically like you have no chance. Like the equilibrium is now like already on these two, like short time scales, it's already like fully done by algorithms. And if you try to do trading like minute by minute, like you will lose money. There are basically no humans who are getting money on like these time scales. But on the longer time scales, on a time scale of like an, a year or something, <laughs> there is still something which like humans are better at, which could be the gossip or it could be just like thinking about things which are like, yeah, like there is there is like predictability and information which is like extractable on like larger time scales. Yeah, like for it's example, like more detailed. For example, there are there are there are probably some people who could predict how likely it is that there will be a war. So they could like adjust, and this is the long time scale. The AI, AI pro still probably can't do the prediction better than humans. Uh, yeah, you, and fix things yeah, like you that. You are able to make money on like Russian stock if you are like able to predict that like, like Putin is like able to start the war like and not win it, yeah. And not win it. Well, like I mean, like if, if you have been like in general, not, if you not predict it. Yeah, but in general, if you are better. In general, if you are better at predicting like Putin's mind than the markets, like you could make money of the markets, and like computers are not so good that as good at like predicting like Putin's mind yet. So, so why the ruble is growing? Also, other examples. The replaceability, right? Because uh -huh. it seems that somehow it's good to be irreplaceable. And I'm reading news in the US that you know the healthcare is unaffordable, the universities are very expensive. And one of the reasons for this supposedly is that it's very difficult to replace the teachers, the nurses, or the doctors, right? Because you need like in-person, one-on-one -on -one interaction with them. So while other fields are becoming more and more cheap and affordable, right? Like we can afford yeah. these services, it's difficult to afford the healthcare or the education because they do not scale up with the technology. Do you see any such effects that, like, simply the fields which will not be possible to replace with the AI will simply be out of reach for most people? Well, the, the US, US education system is a bit complicated as an example because it is also a lot about, about status, about like it's some kind of uh, how is it called? Yeah, I mean, called? It's, not, it's not entirely for you if you are going to Harvard, where more, more of the value you are getting is like from like connections to your classmates or the status and so on. And I think by default you would expect like this like power law distribution of status to become like more and more like like the global superstar like singers are becoming over time like more superstar. So I would I would sort of by default expect the top, most elite universities to becoming like more like even like more of a brand or stuff like that. Also in the US, yes. because of these uh, branches with healthcare and, and education, these companies are just people that expect the profit. So they, they really charge different money or like in other countries. You pay much less than you get. 
Uh, but I think this is a topic, maybe. Yeah, I think this is a topic. By the way, someone with an that of the classes that these schools are like publicly accessible. So you can get this education if you care most about the content of the education. It's probably possible to study at uh, most kind of for free. Like no one is doing this for some reason. Yeah. yeah. So I said but you cannot uh, sit in the classes for free. I tried yeah, it and yeah. uh, yeah, and and that's a good example because they publish most of their uh, like talk series online, yeah, like right? MIT course where like everything exactly. Learn, like, but I think I think people watch it. I think these videos have tens of millions of views. Yeah, but, but, but it's, it's like so much. It's it's an after topic. Okay, it's after topic. Yeah. It's after topic. Yeah. So okay, like let's switch to to topic of this week. So yeah, here in the second part, like I'd like to uh, or like. We would like to say a few more words about how we think about this whole, and like what what uh, what uh, some what are some of the research questions which we are working on and want to work on. So one thing I think the overall framing is um, is this. So so we are talking about like advanced AI or AGI and so on. So maybe it's probably good to think about this. So there is this like bigger space of like possible intelligent systems. Where now we have, I don't know, GPT-2, GPT-3. We can imagine at some point there will be, I don't know, GPT-7, or like we can <laughs> imagine, okay, so if, what if the what, what, what humans or like human brains are able to do? And we can do like hypothetical examples. For example, what if this like ability of human brains to recognize images, what if we succeeded in uh, our making? Some AI be able to do it and like run it at 10,000 the speed. Um, so, so we have like this space. It's and then it's good to think about two questions. Like one is like what systems in this space like will humanity or will humans actually create? And we will probably create like many different systems. And and the, the other, other but um uh yeah, what, what are some processes like leading people to like to develop something like that? So there is some like predictive question, but what we are often uh, like trying to how to think about is like we would be more interested in like more general laws, like to understand it like more abstractly. It's maybe our like bias stemming from our backgrounds, like Thomas is theoretical computer scientist. In terms theoretical physicist way, so we would like more of a theory rather than just uh, a lot of like data points and like a lot of like details. So that's yeah. Yeah. So, so a lot of lot of current research uh, from those organizations on the on the charge. Can you can you go back from the mm -hmm. yeah? Like what Anthropic OpenAI and DeepMind are mostly doing is uh, is what some people call pragmatic alignment research. Where you are taking the system we currently have, like GPT-3 or DALI and others, and you are trying to align those. Like you're like you are trying to either interpret what they are doing, you are trying to see how how they can be misaligned or lied to you. And this is very practical uh, and probably very important, but it's all sort of going from uh, um, like bottom bottom up or from the from what we already have and trying to abstract. They are they are also working on theory, but the uh, but it's mostly a theory which is relevant to the current systems. So the other, the other approaches, which are all some of the other organizations working on, uh, uh, would be would be more about the, the conceptual clarity and like the building building theories for for uh, that can be applied later to the practical and pragmatic problems. Yeah. Also, like empirically, if you don't have like tens of millions of dollars, like it's like pretty difficult to train these models. So. It's not necessary. Like, I mean, if we wanted to like make this, I don't know, make make something like GPT four and make it like hallucinate less, probably a great place to work on it would be the open AI, but uh, or anthropic or anthropic or behind or yeah, anywhere. But I think there's a lot of uh, I think there's or like we think there's a lot of uh, like important problems. In in like more like here in the conceptual clarity and, and like uh, the empirical problems are really important. And I think there's a lot of confusion and like ultimately I'm more optimistic about progress uh, if you have some some like more like health theories and understanding 
then just like this, like making like this model um, lie less and so on. But I I also think that other work is like super important. So it's, yeah. So this is like one thing. Another thing is um, yeah, something interesting about like alignment interfaces. So um, you can think about um, you can think about uh, like part of the technical programs, which like uh, this you play works on. It's like trying to align basically a single AI system with like let's say like one human developer or like you know, one human developer. How much can you? It's something big. Yeah, that's, that's nice. So there is like this interface, which is often labeled something like technical AI science research. Um, there is this other, other interface, which is typically called AI governance. It's more about like, okay, you have these like companies which are developing these powerful systems. So how do we make them like aligned like with like social goals? Um, most of the current work is uh, done in what uh, I would describe as like deep coupling regime, where basically these interfaces are assumed like not to interact. So you, for example, work on like this, like how you can make this model like not lie or something like that. And we are not, not concerned about the rest of the world and like how this can interact with politics and like how well the broader society acts and so on. You just start focusing on the technical problem here. Or like people working on this interface, like we have this company developing powerful AIs, and we don't want, for example, some like race to the bottom where they would create unsafe systems just because it's like faster. And you are kind of putting this like technical problems like in a in in a box, and like you are saying, oh, we just basically want to support the labs which are like developing safe systems, and we don't necessarily care about like how the systems work. And these problems like don't interact too much. So there's a there's a community of people or like a research community working on like those these problems. The community is like actually often meet at the same conferences. Yeah, okay, but our our uh, take on that means like meet and match with other people is. It seems like pretty likely that the, the misalignments on these interfaces will actually interact and can they can interact like like somewhat strongly. Where imagine that like most humans have I don't know, like a personalized AI assistant, which has some some ways of reasoning, is good at some ways of reasoning, and like is bad at some ways of reasoning. And like humans start to rely on these assistants like quite a lot. So we would we would basically expect like this will have a lot of impact on 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 like how like human politics and society works. There's a perfect counterpart, a term from all logically useful counterpart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, called partial equilibrium in economics. When yeah. you're looking only on the black box, you would kind of ignore yeah. the, the yeah. big picture consequences, yeah. and it's called general equilibrium. Yeah. Like you're looking to the consequences yeah. to the whole economy. Yeah. And that's also the distinction between the microeconomics and macroeconomics. Yes. Now, considering all these interactions, the macroeconomics of general equilibrium is, of course, very noble, but usually nothing good comes out of it because it's so difficult and it doesn't apply. Yeah. But I think here, here the, like here, I see there are some, some parallels between econ and, and this, and like some, some, some things which are like maybe slightly different. Yeah. The question also is like whether you are going for predictions, which are very difficult, or sort of noticing problems and concepts. Like I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not. Much, I don't know macroeconomics as well, but I expect that there are uh, that there are problems that cannot be inferred just from microeconomics, and they are like well known uh, problems of the economy. I mean, that are well known in macroeconomics. And even though the models maybe may not be as predictive in the sense that you cannot just predict how the problem will exactly appear and where. But you know something about the problem, like. Also, I mean, like practically, I think we are often like uh, choosing like decision programs. Like I don't know what the, the national bank should say, like what the central bank should set as an interest rate and so on. And I think there are probably some better or worse choices. So, 
And I would be agree it's better if like this can get it by some sort of models or no. I, I just was surprised that, that there is this very clear analogy yeah. between yeah. Uh -huh. distinction yeah. and my field and yeah. yeah. So I think it's maybe worth thinking. We don't have a slide for this, but it maybe it's worth thinking. Uh, so with these like interfaces, or like for example, with like this interface, I think there's a lot of parallels. Of, I think there's a lot of parallels uh, between this and like other fields. But there are also some distinctions. So, so this often, I think, like you can think about this as some sort of a principal agent problem, and this is definitely well studied in economics. The 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 problem is is something like in in econ, it's typically like the problem is studied in a in a regime where there is a bunch of assumptions. For example, okay, so like nowadays there is like there is often some there are some often some assumptions about like. Like information asymmetries between these systems, that like they have different information, but it's maybe like less often done that it's assumed that they have like very different like cognitive capabilities. And also, yeah, typically like the econ thinking is often kind of there are like parallel problems, but uh, the space of solutions in machine learning systems is like pretty different. Like uh, if the system AI here is a machine learning system, like you would not align a machine learning system in the same way as you would align like a company director, but you can, uh, it doesn't have the system, like doesn't have like human motivations. It in some sense, like doesn't have any like self-interest and so on, but it has, you are, for example, creating the system by some like training procedure. Where like you can like specify you can you can create some like uh, loss function or like objective function and you can provide it some data how to train or like some like reward signal basically there is a lot of like there there is a bunch of ways like how you can imagine like aligning or like doing something with or like modifying the systems which would not work for humans. And are not studied in economy. In, in econ, by default, the agents which are talked about are much more like humans or some idealized humans than like machine learning systems. So, so, so I think there's a lot of like useful research in like basically like taking kind of like taking what, what, what's like relevant from like existing field about it, but like uh, noticing there are like these. You can you can think about like how the how the problem where like so, so the problem where there are like humans on both sides is like well studied. Uh, yeah, so the question is like okay, how does it change if then on one side there is like a machine learning system and we have uh, in some ways we understand the machine learning systems better, in some ways we understand them like worse and they have like pretty different like cognitive properties. But uh, like some features of the original problem basically like stay or like are transported. So I think this is often a pretty productive way of thinking about it, which like already generated like some, some important insights. Yeah, machine, machine aligning machine learning system is, is an interesting way, it's both harder and easier. It's for example, one, one reason why it's harder in this context is because uh, the way not, not only machine not only can machine learning system probably be smart smarter, at least in like in some domains, uh, or faster, much faster, uh, but also they are their thinking is alien in some sense. They can just optimize whatever you tell them, and then they, they don't really have our not just morals, but also like even like the, the patterns of thinking that we have. They have some other patterns of thinking we don't really know yet. Uh, but on the other hand, this might be easier because you can really do a lot of things to the system. Like you can, you can uh, the, the training data you use or any, any kind of restrictions you put on it, uh, you can choose those. You are not just aligning any AI, you are aligning the AI that you build, and you can choose what you build. So this actually can make it much simpler. Like, uh, like if you if you already if you if you were biologically designing an ecosystem, that's a really hard task to sort of like in general. But if you can actually if you have really good control about, uh, I'm not sure how, how perfect this metaphor is, but if you really have a good control over uh, which uh, species you engineer and what features they will have, it seems like it could be actually easier. Like if you, for example. Engineer uh, like an uh, artificial ecosystem for terraforming Mars or some other sci fi, uh, uh, then, then sort of like creating this ecosystem of our current species seems super hard. 
So but, I, yeah, yeah, completely agree. So the, the typical alignment problem in economics is that I'm an owner, but I don't have time to manage my company, so I hire a manager. Uh, who might be pretty good, he may know a lot, but this bastard also wants to get rich, so he has some yeah. of his presence. Yeah. And, and so all of the research is about how to manage this that misalignment yeah. of, of interest. So the friction is well defined. Now you are saying that your artificial intelligence can be programmed to have perfectly aligned references with me. Right? We hold yeah. it <laughs> so so, so what, what, what was not clarified yet, what is the friction? So if I could perfectly program artificial intelligence in so that it actually loves making me rich, then well, the problem is solved. I mean, it would just. But <laughs> <laughs> the problem, so, that, that so that's what we are trying to do. Also, yes, that's, so, that's, so that's one example we're trying to do, and we don't know how. The question is how to clarify the, the friction. Somehow it is difficult to program the artificial intelligence in exactly doing what I want it to do. Yeah, so there, there are a few. The, the, this this would go back to the specification problem. So, like, if you are like talking with the human manager, like, it's like uh, you can kind of like rely on some like shared like thinking patterns. Like, you are using the same concepts, like the company, and you want the company to, I don't know, grow and so on. And you are able to specify this to the human manager, probably in like pretty like human way. So I think uh, if you imagine uh, like you've just hired some like airline like species to hire the company, it becomes like the friction, like the friction doesn't come from, it, the, the friction can actually come from something which will be some sort of like emergent uh, um, okay. So, so a very similar problem with, as with humans can, can arise if you misspecify the objectives. So if you are not able to specify the what, what you want like exactly or like correctly, then you have this misalignment and like a lot of the like reasoning like applies. Like this system can decide, okay, I was specified to uh, I don't know increase the production of uh, like I don't know like the, the canonical example, which is like canonical in the sense that it's like nonsense. <laughs> and then it's like paper clips, so like you tell the system like in the paper clip factory to increase the production of paper clips, and the system decides, okay, now I have this objective, <laughs> and okay, like how do how do I how do I achieve it? So like I will realize that if I'm like stopping the the system which is managing this company, I will not not produce like more like it will stop my ability to produce paper clips. So the system may start optimizing to, uh, I don't know, make it difficult to switch it off, for example, because <laughs> not because it would have some sort of like self-preservation instinct, but because the self-preservation is like convergent, like instrumental sub-goal of the goal of optimizing paper clips. Also, the system can have the goal, okay, like if I need to optimize paper clips, it's probably better if I have like more power overall. So maybe I should uh, get more money. And maybe if the system is like powerful enough, maybe it can decide, okay, I've discovered this like vulnerability in this like frequently used like um, computer system. And if I will like hack into all these systems, like I will create so much more like paper clips. And then, then you run into a problem that like you specify maximization of paper clips, but you didn't you didn't specify like all the other things which Mm -hmm. Like in some sense, like you specified something in like one, like one variable, and you have sort of uh, left like all other state variables of the world. Like kind of, it's up to the system what it, what, what it will do, and like by default, it will probably do things which you don't want. And uh, yeah, and then you are in this like misalignment like regime. It turns, it turns out that it's very, very hard to define common sense. Like you would say, well, so I can, for example, so table system that they shouldn't do any, anything illegal. So no hacking, for example. But then it, it can actually then start a lobbying campaign to change the law in, in, its, in its favor, even very subtly. And, and it's sort of hard to say, well, this is not the stuff, you should maintain the status quo as much as possible. This is actually really hard to do because it's not clear what status quo is in, a, in like a very complex, complex world. There is an analogy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, this this 
example is the manager being hired. So just a kind of canonical example of mechanism design has been misleading. What is being used that theory of, of aligning yeah. interest is in development of tax systems, social yeah. systems, uh, other legal systems where people have to self-report, and so it's done in such a way that self-reporting is yeah. self is optimal. Uh, so there is often a misalignment arises because somebody designing those systems couldn't come couldn't think of some contingencies, but then you let it go in the yeah. world and being used by millions of people and some smart guys will, yeah. will figure out some, some way of gaining it. And so there is a general feeling that, that using high power <laughs> incentives, like, like, like using yeah. monetary incentives to kind of guide people's behavior can backfire because people will always gain it. Yeah. So basically there is this, I think there is like pretty strong parallel here where like people basically assume that if the machine learning systems are like really powerful, they will by default like and you try to align them in this way, like they will by default like find a way how to game it. So you just do it by large numbers. Yeah, yeah, they like yeah, yeah, and yeah, well, I think that it's like okay, like you mentioned the, the AI system is like half the human, but it's like running in like million copies, so we will probably find to gain your sophistication. So, so if 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 it was just this, I think it will be pretty clear the problem is like unsolvable. Like if it was just like if it was just like this problem of like specification, and you just assume the systems will just like be like searching through the space of like how to evaluate your specification like much faster, then I think that it's like by default it like wouldn't would be like unsolvable. I think like fortunately what kind of like plays in in our favor is that uh, in this case with society, like you are like not designing the individual humans, but here you are able to like design these systems. So you can like design them in a way where like you hope like this will be solvable. But uh, so so you probably won't, and this is like a lot of what, what this research is, a lot of what this research is like basically like trying to come up with like, I don't know, like a learning regimes or like a training regimes, where, for example, this in some sense like assumes how this is supposed to work. Is uh, yeah, if you have like one, if you have like if you are trying to like align one system, which is like much more powerful than you, and it will just like search through the space of like how to avoid what you are saying, you have no chance. But maybe you can you can uh, maybe create something which is just like slightly, let's say like slightly smarter than you. So it's still, like, there's not this like <laughs> imbalance between like millions of people searching the space and you designing some constraints. So, so if you are designing the constraints, it was just like one, one other person on the other side, it would probably work because there's not this like huge like boundary rationality disbalance. So like these systems are kind of assuming that, okay, like we have, let's say if one human, so let's, Let's let's say you design uh, like you you uh, kind of like sexy in the like aligning this one system, which is like roughly at your level, so you are still it will still like not like outsmart you. So for example, a system would be okay. Let's let's design like these like ten aligned copies, and you somehow succeed in like them like really being aligned with you. So then you have like these like ten copies or something. And you can use the 10 copies to like align like one, one copy, which would be a bit smarter than these copies. And then you can like make like, I don't know, 10 copies of the slightly smarter. Yes. So, so the idea here is that the, the, the version two will be smarter than version one, but not smarter than 10 copies of version one or version one running at faster speed or something like that, or a hundred copies. So the idea is that the hundred copies of, of version one, which, which was, uh, assumed to be aligned with you, uh, can actually really make sure they can spend, spend a lot of subjective time making sure that version two is also aligned, even though it's smarter. And then, then we iterate and we make a hundred copies of version two, and, we, and then you then you create, have them create a version three, which is slightly <laughs> smarter than version two, version two, but it's less smart than hundred copies of version two. So, so it's basically trying to move in the space of like how many copies of a system is and like how, um, like the disbalance in like the, the bounded cognitive capabilities, it's trying to design some like stepwise procedure. Okay. Yeah. Sorry.
Yeah. So you have to use many steps, but you probably have to make sure that each step is kind of error proof. Yes. 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 This is this is this is not a like a complete proposal. It's more like a direction that is that is different than just let's train the version hundred right away. Yeah, I think more more or less like everyone in the field like believes that like if you just have a box which you know is like like much better than humans in like strategy and planning and like research, and the box will be I don't know like like much much better than than like you and it's like you didn't specify the objectives like correctly like you are probably like you have like kind of like no chance in the same sense that if i don't know like a five-year kid is like trying to like fight a bear yeah like i don't know fight a bear but like trying to i don't know constrain like your abilities to but i, I think there are some like Kind of like intuition guiding parallels so you can think about i don't know like imagine like the like the relations between like a five-year-old and like you and like you like all your powers and cognitive abilities and the five-year-old like specify what it wants and uh, it would i don't know it would want to avoid like going to bed or something <laughs> you would probably just like outsmart it and it would the kid would typically have like no chance in like like controlling really controlling what you are doing or like understanding like all the degrees of freedom you have so mm -hmm. so so the intuition is like if you are already in this situation then <laughs> it's a situation you don't want to be in like pretty much so like yeah so actually with the process of like checking like you know like increasing the like complex like uh yeah it's like with with with, yeah. with events, i sort of see there are like three risks yeah. that are basically all of them are on the right side of the of the of the, of the table of the, of the human part first of them is rather trivial and i can imagine that like rather manageable because like it's a question of time when somebody comes with, you know, like uh, automatizing this, like, you know, verification that the, that the AI is doing what it should do. Yeah. So, so in the end, you will have AI like verifying if, if another AI is like in that line. Mm -hmm. This is something that is possible, like somehow possible to control. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this, um, <laughs> yeah, like you mean like a human like not using the like I mean, so so what we are describing is like yeah, this is basically some like procedure mm -hmm. like designed to like keep the more and more powerful systems like in, 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 in like like aligned. So you are saying someone will just like not do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Like there will be a, a human in the end, but I mean, like it can be a multi level, you know, like a, yeah, you I don't mean, really know what's going on in the different levels. Yeah, I think this is typically understand, understandable here is there, there are like mm -hmm. these like interfaces, whether the like if the humans in some, if the, if the humans are in some sense like aligned with the mm -hmm. broader, like you have, yeah, I agree. Like you have like this like interface, the AI trying to do mm -hmm. what the human wants. But then you have the question is like okay so how we can like make sure that the humans like don't ask the AIs to do stupid things but mm. design me a new virus which will kill as many people as possible mm. it's probably a well specified task but we probably want the system to reply yeah like i want or something mm. which which what helps currently and it's possible at this like solution at scale is that these systems could be like centralized like you can just like download GPTC on your laptop mm -hmm. and play with it. You interact with some interface. So maybe uh, if the systems are powerful, maybe they're like like and they are like run somewhere. It's mm -hmm. it's the case that the system will tell you. Yeah, like I want like yeah. Sorry, I think they are currently like we have sometimes like all like toy versions of this. So originally, like originally, some of these systems were like would tell you i don't know like if you would ask it like how should i kill someone like if there or something that would generate like, some plausible ideas like like i don't know someone posted on internet an example like how you should do like shoplifting and the system came up with like reasonably really good like uh, ideas like, if you want to steal stuff in supermarkets like how you should like avoid like where the guards are and so on. I, <laughs> I, I sort of suspect if you ask it now, like the they they 
uh, tried to like make it answer like wait sorry like I, I don't know so, so I, can, I think yeah. I think that the public GPT three still doesn't do that you can still ask it whatever I mean that they, they have some some like post processing that do yeah. at least flag something like you know obscene yeah. or yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but it's but it's very rudimentary but but people are training models that are explicitly tra trained to be more helpful and more safe and one question is uh, for example if about competitiveness like if you are trying to make models which are for example not able to help you with shoplifting or uh, you know plotting a murder or something then this the, the system is less capable so maybe people will have as much incentive to use it but for some for now, for now it, it even seems like it is not it might be even helpful like mm. if you have a system that is trained to be safer and helpful then it's actually more useful in general maybe not for shoplifting but for every anything else it actually Actually, like coming up with better ideas. So there is there is this there is this intuition that that is kind of hopeful of of not like if we make systems that are uh, by being helpful and safe, uh, which is like a, at least low level goal mm -hmm. of, of alignment, uh, by being actually more useful rather than less combat competitive or comp competent, uh, that would be that would make it much easier because then we would not need so much regulation. Maybe we probably might do it. Are there things which, which like, uh, I don't know, like people answer to care working, if you can, you can kind of like uh, look on more on the query, like look on what the human is asking for. And for example, it seems what works, like surprisingly well, it's like you basically build a corpus of like reasonable queries and like if something is like too much like out of like, distance between your queries, like, it's too weird question like the model would like say like i don't know or, <laughs> make um, a boring ai is yeah. the goal <laughs> it's, I, I think like in, in for like like practical applica applications like i think they, they sort of need this because if you want to build this into a chatbot of a company you can probably build on the chatbot some channel for like many of the commercial applications if you are chatting with a telco provider chatbot which is trying to help you how to change uh, and run a sim card or something and you ask the you ask the chatbot about i don't know some like sexual techniques or something <laughs> you probably want the like the chatbot representing the company to tell you yeah like i want to talk about it as opposed to like mm -hmm. going to some like role play like scenario <laughs> with you so so i think there's a lot of like commercial interest in that yeah, another, another thing I was thinking about, and that I think is less trivial, yeah. is that you know, like the, you know, the left part should also like try to align the right part with it. Yeah, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, like, human human developments are sort of like you know, like changing humans. Yeah, like, we, you know, we will get to it. Reversibly. Yeah, thanks for the segue. So, so one of the so this is like one kind of like pretty broad level like uh broad view how we are thinking about it uh so there is one one more specific research, research question are we thinking so which is or like one direction it's like basically alignment with like self aligned systems <laughs> so here we have the system a which is trying to get aligned here the system for some reason named h and uh, okay, so this is a toy model, but it's not entirely uh, stupid. So you can you can think about this system as consisting of like different parts, like you have like parts that want to see, and these three parts like want different things. You can imagine this is a committee, for example, or you can imagine these are like different like human motivations. I think it's like useful to think about even in the case of an individual human mind. People are talking, oh, I'm sort of like torn on this, and like one part of me would want and more uh, go swimming this afternoon, other part would want to like read these papers. And, and, and then there is a work <laughs> model, there is like a work model, which is kind of like a representing the work, and there is some procedure which is like some, let's say, like aggregation procedure. If this was a committee, you can imagine they would vote. And uh, yeah, the, these parts can be a members or something. Yeah, the key is this is not, uh, this is in some important sense, like not like self aligned, that like these all, it's not like all, all of these parts would like want the same thing. So the problem is if, if by alignment we, we, we say, okay, we want this system to do what this wants to do. Yeah? Few different ways how we can how we can understand the the want. 
the big drive system and it has different parts which are yeah. distinct references, same as the model. It's our own possibility. Yeah. And it says that it is impossible to always aggregate the references of the subparts into all these different references of the system. And by preferences, you mean utility function, right? No, no, by preference, I mean ranking over the object. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, I yeah that's over, but I think like the uh, arrows in possibility there is like overstated, like there is no reason. So I think that like errors in possible terms, it's a pretty weak objection because you don't need to assume they have they are ranking preferences. Let's assume you have like you have uh, access to the, the functions of these systems. Then you can see you can use that from like Bergen in theory, and there is some solution where they Bergen like merge the, the, the function. Yes, but it's the, the, the behavior of the system H may appear irrational because it's a common merge of yeah, I do agree. Yeah, I do agree. Yeah, I think the, the system, the problem is like, okay, the system on A is like, you can try to get aligned with the, this kind of like, whatever the result of the aggregation is. You can imagine the, the AI is trying to get aligned with, I don't know, some committee voting on, on. Yeah, so this is one, one way how this can try to get aligned. So there is a different way how this can try to get aligned. And for example, this can this can basically try to learn the preferences of the of the individual parts. This can this can kind of mm -hmm. try to learn like these like sub preferences, and learn the work model. And maybe it will be able to maybe because the system is like let's say like more uh, like less computationally or like bounded or like more rational. It seems pretty plausible that like this this system will be able to find. Something which would be like part of improvement for like all the parts. Where like originally, I don't know, the committee was voting based on some like uh, flawed idea about what the action space is, but maybe the system is uh, maybe the system will like I don't know, they it hears the discussion and it will tell them, okay, like you have like you want like these three things, you think like only one of then one of you can can win, but in practice, like there is this solution where like like everyone's like preferences will be satisfied more. Mm -hmm. So I think this is also so I mean I it, I think this is in some sense like pretty natural way how to see the alignment. This is also a pretty natural way how to think about uh, about like alignment. There is. Uh, yeah, that, that, it seems to be a very different thing. So the first problem we have been at the time in that space was about a person not being expressed what, what, what she wants. Yes. Here it is like the people did not find optimal solution. There was something far too dominating to what they are doing, which is not clever enough to find it. And this machine on left A uh, will find a part of dominating uh, yeah. improvement. But here, I think like here, this seems like in case if you imagine this is in case of individual human, this is more or less like like for example doing what the person is like saying. So you, you, you could have it in a very simple way. So maybe I am just a very simple person with one center yeah. in my in my head. Mm -hmm. so I have a perfect reference, nothing complicated, but I didn't find. The, the top of, of, of the list. Yeah. Like I'm just choosing currently something suboptimal. I'm eating gecko's, but bananas are much better. I just didn't figure out, and the machine will tell me, oh, I can switch to bananas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. that's what you are saying. With, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, there is. Uh, yeah, I would need to like divide the problem into like more like nuance of problems, but in case of like, uh, let's. Uh, for a while, like not to talk about like economic models, but what this would mean, um, what this would mean on, uh, I don't know, like in some sort of like natural language, like intuitive understanding. This is kind of like aligning what the, what the system on the right is like saying. It's like kind of like following the commands like directly the system like says and so on. But uh, I think it, it as it works with like humans, it's often I think with like friends, like friendly humans, like two other humans, often understand that humans are like not rational in the sense that they always say 
was in their best in best interests for like many reasons. So the machine A listening to the flow of, of commands A yeah. learns then what is inside of the box H. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't need to learn by just this like explicit channel. Like here you can assume the machine has like access to also an only like here the machine A is like not yeah, and uh, uh it's orthogonal direction. Yeah, basically yeah. it's not it's not that this is like the only the variable but commands the, are the, the ones of, yeah. so the, the motivation was that the, the, the system H is choosing something which can be divided into the hoofed. Yeah. And if you are trying to learn from the behavior of the system H what's the best for it, mm -hmm. and it has never chosen banana, even though banana is currently moving over apples, yeah. then you would conclude by kind of a legal choice type of reasoning that the system H doesn't like bananas. That's, uh, that's so it would be a mistake. Otherwise, you would then have to, if you want to follow this mistake, you have to have an explicit model of the bond rationality of the system H. You have to reason about what has stopped system H yes. from bananas. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. Have, so system A would have to have an explicit model yeah. of, of non rational yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or it could have uh, like a good a good access to, to the inside of the of system H or of the individual agents, which, which you can sometimes have. You know, for example, I mean, if if, if the P ones, uh, these two P threes are all like humans, then you can probably with with a bit with a better knowledge or knowledge of uh, neuroscience, uh, you could probably uh, like have good priors about what kind of values human have. That is, this is my sort of uh, example. And then you could see, see that, well, in many cases, it's quite plausible that this human actually would like bananas. And then you could just, you know, such as experiments and stuff. That, that sounds pretty dangerous. Uh, so this is what economists call is an ugly word for paternalism. Like I see some behavior and I figure out that you're making a mistake. You have been eating apples for all your life and bananas are better for you. And mm -hmm. I don't, I, 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 and we use this switch. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of, also, to be not culture because you, know, you should never be too sure you understand the one rationality of the subject. And so, you guys would let delegate that to, to an artificial intelligence, right? So, you have no, an artificial, we are, artificial no, 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 no. We, are, we, are, we are saying that there are like three different ways how you can, how you can, what you can mean by alignment. Okay. No. But so it's like this is like descriptive. So, I think like this is like multiple <laughs> like pathologies. Like, if you are like, like trying to align what the humans are like saying, it's often or like this, they're like demonstrated behavior. Like humans are like often like pretty like irrational or like this is I don't know if you are. Like... So, so I think that what they are describing is also like uh, I agree that that's that's uh, very undesirable or uh, but but so yeah uh, but if, if, if we are already like the human is already doing this a lot to humans like for example having all the safety mechanisms because like. You are preventing, or at least disincentivizing, disincentivizing people from doing certain things because there could be dangerous for them either immediately, like you know fire hazards, or or in, lo in the long long term, like please don't destroy your life and career, uh, and take those like uh, go to the psychiatrist, psychiatrist earlier rather than later. And uh, well, sorry, what I'm, what I'm just saying is that there there is a range of things, and of course like. There is a very bad version of it, but th there is also some, some like very necessary version of it. If you have, if you have some, some system which is very uh, powerful and dangerous, like a really, you know, like a really sharp, complex automated knife that you know does something very mm -hmm. tricky, then you probably want it to be sort of aware of that you probably don't want to be cut. So, I have a simple example, like imagine like in this case, like the human gets drunk and just like and tells the AI assistant, I want. I really hate this place. I want to set it on fire. So I think in in most cases you want this system to kind of like model the human is maybe uh, uh, drunk or something, and it's not in a state where like it should just like fall the or the thing. It is a very good example of an island problem because you want the artificial intelligence to understand the preferences of the human subject better than the human subject yes. itself. Uh, uh, I mean, right. So, so the human subject did not find something which is part of optimal yeah. for all his cells or her cells. 
and the other and you want the artificial intelligence to, to improve our own. So, um, well, I mean, so I mean, this is a better understanding of references than the I, I, I think there are, yeah, sorry, go on. I think you are going too much by the econ like notion of references. Like, I think here you can think about the preference, I don't know, like the preference for a tasty fruit. And uh, like, it's not it's not necessarily a preference over like apples versus bananas. But you, here you can, I don't know, like generalize from the fact that, and even current systems are like doing like this like all the time. They see that you have bought like these books on Amazon and they are like kind of offering you book, like options which you would have not considered before because like you haven't just like, uh, you don't know about like all the books sold on Amazon. But the Amazon like recommender system is like having some implicit notion of your like taste in books. And uh, I think this is more about the uh, about this is not necessarily about preference, like this is about some sort of preferences, but this is more about the work model that you want, like your work model like doesn't contain like all the books, where like amazing like recommend the systems like in some sense contains like all the books. So this is like the, the amazing is then able to uh, like recommend the options that you should not even sample. So I think this is fine. It gets more. This is like one dimension of it. I think the other dimension is the conflict of preferences, where like you can have preference for a food which is like tasty and like healthy, and maybe you haven't considered this like fancy and more plant-based like balls made from dates and nuts or something. And yeah, it's it's trying to like find something which is like part of the improvement over like wanting to eat like sweet things and healthy things. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I want to say that like I uh, there are there are also two components of what to the to the example that you are saying. One of them is what we should do. Like, should we actually allow the, the drunk person to set their home on fire, or how difficult should it be? And this is the governance question. But the, the other question is how do we even like how do we even model or figure out that the person that like the other self of the person may not want to set the house on fire? How do we even notice that? And this is or how do we model the person such that this is even, even, even possibly part of the model? And I think that I don't know how to answer the, I, I can imagine some dystopias and like very vividly, <laughs> but also the naive approach of sort of just, just doing what the person says is also both not what is done and what, what not what uh, like would be sufficient problem. So I think that like at least, uh, at least looking at the model in theory and figuring out what is the right model for this is probably important to do. And the second question is, of course, like, yeah, what should be the ideal governance of it? And that's, I also don't know that. So, sorry, go on. I, mean, I think there's a lot of problem with the, how do I think there's a lot of problem with the self analyze. My, my earth plan is basically if you have one human and you, put, you, you create an identical copy of yourself, oh, no. it will not often, it will be like unaligned, like pretty soon. So, it's not entirely clear like what we want, and we should probably. Here also, you can you can think about stuff like how do I sometimes think about it? So yeah, again, a time model. So the systems like learn the partial preferences. So the, the offering like more options, it seems like more about model improvement. <laughs> but you can imagine like this systems like learns the partial preferences and then then imagine like these people or like these parts of like a single human were doing some sort of a negotiation which had like limited time because they need to decide in like I don't know 20 minutes and this system would be for example able to simulate like what conclusion <laughs> they would reach if they discussed this for like 10 days this seems like an improvement where like you are just like removing some you are like removing some like bounded actually you are like making some the negotiation like less bounded so i think there is some like broad intuitive sense that this is what you probably want from the systems like they, you want the systems to be smarter in some sense so this is probably good but then you run into a problem yeah you have some some questions from 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 zoom yeah so if you have this, then you may you may be interested in things. Okay, well, but what if the end result is like, uh, what for example, if these preferences get like amplified 
at like different like rates. Like what if, what if some preferences are like easier to compute and like you are. Um, Let's ignore it for now. <laughs> oh, someone raised the hand. So yeah. uh -huh, any, okay. any question? Uh -huh, okay. Maybe you can maximize the. No, uh, Yaroslav, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Uh, uh, can you be more explicit about the notion of human values? Do you take it as <laughs> a normative concept or a logical concept? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a nice question. So, uh, yeah, here I'm kind, of, I'm, I'm sort of trying to be agnostic about it. I, I would like empirically say that, like, it seems like the human wants thing, and this is a useful description. And then there is a question, like, whether we should assume that there are like these like preferences, which, for example, all like economy. Literature assumes that there are some references, or you can go yes, in this picture, you can kind of go like fully agnostic. You can you can kind of take this as a black box and you are not assuming anything about it. And I don't know, like you will just, for example, learn this is more more closer to what the current language rules are doing, which could be something like learn from all the humans what they are like writing on internet. <laughs> And it's some model of everything. It, it seems it implicitly has some preferences. Uh, yeah, but you, in some sense, like don't care about, like you, you like don't try to look on like what these preferences are. But I see what uh, yeah, so so there is a spectrum. How much you how in to what extent like you assume that something like human like wants or like preferences are like a real, but I, I think what I'm talking about is like uh, like more or less like in like it's like relatively independent of like what your specific like notion of like wants is like whether whether here you assume these are like utility functions or whether this is some I don't know fixed points in predictive processing or whether this is like I don't know like moral philosophies of different things. I, I think this is like kind of agnostic about like what the what the preferences are. If it makes sense. Well, I I think it it would help uh, if 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 this uh, notion is it's more uh, clear if it's clarified because it has some fundamental implications. What what is implied here is 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 a notion of constraint because values are related or defined by goals right yeah. so so there no, is not necessarily yeah, not necessarily I, well I... it depends how of course you can you can understand it in different ways but that's why i am asking for more clarification because then you know, people understand uh, the, the, for example, relationship between ethics and values, and 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 so if if you have, have different understanding, that that leads really to confusion. So that's why I'm asking that I think that it it, it would be really useful to to try to to clarify this uh, how, how you how you understand yeah, I, I, will, I, I will i will try and i will also try to explain why i have not, i haven't done that so i think this is like true even uh this is true for like quite a few different models of preferences so one specific model of preferences would be an agent which is like utility function a utility function one utility function two utility function three where the utilities are defined utility function are defined the classical way as like real valued functions or world states like uh, following some 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 theorems so i think this this is one possible option with the shared work model other possible option would be, I don't know, like uh, let's go to virtue ethics and let's assume one is the virtue of uh, prudence and the two other are well, like these, this could be a committee of the virtue ethicists who, are, who care about virtues and virtues are not goal oriented. But this would still be like true in, in a sense. 
So I'm, I'm trying to like think about it in a way which is like independent of the specific uh, theories or like specific models of what, what are the ones, whether it's like this ethical, or you can go in other like different like direction. You can imagine like this is, I don't know, like this is like utilitarian ethics. This is like deontology ethics. This is some, I don't know. Yeah, this is some like virtue at this is and like and they are like negotiating in like plain language like making philosophical arguments so it still it would be it would be the case that that like and you can imagine like all of this like happening in like one head of a human where like the human would be deliberating like okay this action seems to have good consequences but it involves like i don't know like violating this like the ontology rule and I don't know what a virtuous person would and you can imagine like a single person like having this like internal like negotiation or conflict so I don't think this is like really dependent on what is the specific uh, specific notion of like preferences or wants or like moral theories but you can imagine like all of these cases and you can think about like what goals like for all of them. Um, we don't have too much time. It's like 20 minutes. Yeah. So I will try to briefly go over the few other, few other uh, like directions. One is like ecosystems of AI services. So I think, so this was, uh, there is a lot of here, which I think could be like imported and, or like borrowed or like learned from, um, like econ, there is another domain of uh, source expertise where I think there could be something to like learn. Um, so one one possible trajectory of like how this can go is uh, it's like really a bit similar to the like landscape where like you can imagine for like each direction of human activity you can have some like AI based services which will like provide provide the thing. And then the question is some interesting question is like how how much you should exp expect like specialization versus generality. Where uh, like by general, like like a highly general thing could be, I don't know, like something like for example, an artificial, like the, the direct of the company is like a highly general agent where like I, it's like as general as me, so I can like delegate pretty much in this way. And opposite of this would be like a specialized services like like a specialized AI service for like translation, which is more or less the kind of a specialized service for like this task and like some services which are maybe like pretty general, but like pretty bad. At, like the, they are not competitive with the specialized services. And you can imagine this like ecosystem of services. So if, if this is how, how the world is going to look like, there are some questions which I think are like a bit similar to uh, like companies or like ecology. Where like one is like whether whether like where we should expect like many like specialized like services versus like like more channel things. Uh, also, uh, what's the what's the entire like, ecosystem of the services is able to do? How what what uh, follows from the ability of like composing the services. Another thing is uh, if you may you may say think, okay, this is not by default. By default, like the, the default like attractor of the space is like some like very general agents. Many people believe the very general agents, like the more general, the more like dangerous. So maybe you may want to like enforce this like uh, somehow. Like you may want to like actually enforce or like support like by regulatory needs some specialization. Because it makes uh, it may make things like more like transparent. Because if I don't know, like uh, I think it works in 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 uh, like in uh, a current like economy as well. That I don't know, like the if you are an operator of the stock market, you are not allowed to trade on it at the same time, for example. So this like enforces some like boundary, and this is the, the things get like typically more like interpretable or like easier to understand from the boundaries. So maybe you want maybe you want some like regulatory walls like inserted in the space, which would prevent uh, creation of some sort of like all 
They're all encompassing like systems which. And so, so, it, so we do have some guiding principles of building this world. Yeah. Wall. So if you work at a certain national bank, you are not supposed to trade on the stock market because you have some inside yeah. information. Yeah. Uh, in other cases, doing two different listing tasks, maybe uh, you use some kind of an externality that you may not internalize. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so yeah. we have this kind of informational and externality based yeah. guidance system mm -hmm. for restricting domains yeah. of operation. Yeah. Do you have some such uh, high level? Because maybe this. Walls also are damaging, so it might be a trade off. So you yeah. may want to have some guidance that tells you where to build the wall. Yeah, and, and maybe, yeah, and there are no, I am not aware of uh, too many results in this. Like, it's not, uh, I think there's like a single, like, like there's like a very small number of people thinking about this in the AI services, like ecosystems. Yeah, so, so the, think, there's a bit of regulation with like biases and stuff like that, maybe. I'm not sure what you mean. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, most of the most of the alignment research is focusing on sort of aligning a single AI as opposed to the picture with the alignment boundaries. Uh, but the, the question here is uh, should we should we look at the capabilities of the whole ecosystem that we are building, the, uh, or or one or one AI? Uh, it's the similar metaphor is something like uh, R. There is a concept of general intelligence, and uh, many people are assuming that humans are generally intelligent. But if you look at the particle of human, it is not very generally intelligent because it only knows like every human has its own domain where it can do things capably or less capably. But if you put them into another environment, they might actually like not be as able. What is generally intelligent is humanity as a whole. And there is like a big difference when you think about what the civilization can do versus what a single human can do. And single humans are yet kind of fragile. And this, so, so this metaphor, the metaphor translates here into, uh, since we are already like building a lot of uh, AI powered services that are using each other and they are like, increasingly using each other, you know, like a translation service uh, communicated with like image generation or with uh, like I don't know, printing service for to print the uh, translation and things like that. Uh, then the question is, how can we look at the whole ecosystem that they, they that, that the composite sort of system or- uh, Wouldn't that be- Counter argument. So, so you have. I, I thought you have proposed these high walls yeah. uh, to 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 impose security. But now yeah. the analogy with humanity. I mean, individuals are not as dangerous as nations or yeah, organizations. Yeah. 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 So I think there's like the, I think there's like what you mentioned. There's like there is a trade off. The walls are like could be costly. I, I was thinking about the walls. There already are, and I think there are some walls between. For example, it seems there are some walls between like a, like content which is like advertising and like non advertisement. <laughs> like you open a web page and it seems like part of it uh, is like delivered to you as an advertisement and part of it like isn't. And I think the civilization is like trying to enforce some wall that uh, um, basically like is trying to do something like. Uh, like you ideally you should know whether the text like you you are reading is for certain is the aim of uh i don't know like uh manipulating you into buying a product or not the boundary is like not entirely clear but i think there's a push for like such boundary to exist so you know whether the results you are in amazing you know whether you are there. There are two different algorithms. If you open Amazing and you search for something, you will see some results where the results are like uh, marked as like paid advertisement or something. And if they were kind of delivered by one algorithm, and then you have the normal, like what's like recommended to you, and then these other results were like produced by a different algorithm. And there's probably some like exchange of data between them and so on. But still, that it seems there is something like a wall which is possibly a bit like enforced on amazing from the outside. So it's need, it needs to optimize profits in like two different ways, and it's like the more interpretable whether it's like recommending something which is very really good to you as opposed to something which where uh, like someone might trade it that uh, someone traded on the hypothesis that. After reading like uh, 50 pages of fake Chinese products, like you all want to buy this, even if it's like price three times as high or something. 
Yeah. So uh, the that issue can be uh, can be because uh, and there there are, there are two ways you can build walls in high high space high dimensions uh, or just spaces of, of services. One of them is to just keep the services specialized, which can help you with the uh, interpretation, for example. Like if you, you can actually observe how the translation service and the ad serving service and the image generation service and the data service are communicating together. And you can like hope at least hope to try to see patterns or something that is happening. But well, if it was just just one big AI which does those four things, uh, then there is usually not much we can do. Uh, and the other thing is about uh, like actual, the actual content where you can, for example, try to build. So this is this is what what Yanis was, was talking about the, the advertisement versus uh, uh, or organic search, as Google calls it. Uh, and you can you can also like imagine that, for example, you want you might want to separate the cluster of AIs that are somehow dealing with education and the cluster of AIs which are somehow dealing with you know advertisements or marketing and there might be another cluster that is dealing with science or yeah so yeah. there are multiple types of walls that you can build huh yeah so we actually just to end <laughs> So now, now there is like a space for discussion, just for like to like uh, maybe briefly summarize what are some of the things we are thinking about, and we are also like looking for like collaborations. On so one is like alignment of like this topic of like alignment of self-aligned agents, where yeah, there is a lot of stuff which was uh, which is kind of. Mm, on boundaries of econ or like even like more moral philosophy and maybe neuroscience and maybe other disciplines where it's in part about like that humans are like not these like perfectly self-aligned agents which would like really like know what they want and would be able to express what they want in like clear language which would like reflect what they actually want and so on. So like we, there is, this leads to other topic which we didn't uh, talk about uh, much, but uh, yeah, there actually it's like a lot of, I don't know, like almost like all existing econ research is, for example, done with the assumption that the preferences are sort of given. <laughs> it's not about like how the preferences of the agents are like modified and so on. But uh, yeah, there is probably more to look into kind of. How a neuroscience based models of human preferences would look like, for example. Hierarchical agency is, uh, maybe you should briefly mention that. Or, yeah, what do you mean by hierarchical agency? There, uh, it's there, it's there, it just needs to be turned on. I think you can just click it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, so this is about uh, so so this is based on the observation that uh, yeah we are thinking often about agents like counties or corporations or CPS or group of friends, and sometimes we think about this as an agent, like what is like like Russia is at the King Ukraine. But notably, like this, like Russia, it's like composed of like individual agents, and it's often often we think about on this like layer of like individual agents. So so we have these like super agents composed of small agents, and the rough claim is like we have a um, relatively large amount of theory and mathematics on understanding the vertical relations between agents of the same hierarchical level like between people or between countries and so on and this is pretty useful like game theory like all in the like direction seems like pretty useful um, our claim is that we have much worse understanding of the uh, like of this like vertical direction and uh, the claim is this is also like important because you have so here it's like kind of like clear that you, you can have like like horizontal conflicts, for example. But sometimes it seems like you have something like a vertical conflict. You can have a conflict between like a federal government in the US and the states. So this is not exactly like modeled as entities of the same level, but uh, or like you can have uh, you can have the 
also the composite entity may sometimes like have like preferences over what the preferences of the constituent parts are but it's different from like voting theory in like voting it's typically that these the voting would be like an upper direction here that a parliament decides on something by the members of the parliament voting but uh, what often happens in like uh, real world it seems the super agent entity can have preferences over the like preferences of its parts like a cult may want its members <laughs> to be more more cultish yeah so this that this is not covered by the parliament analog it's not the parliament would want the parliamentarians to be more like yeah. so, so the good example from from russia is that if you're a if you're a like a professor or a, objections to the current uh, government and direction of russia uh you can of course model the whole like few million people nation and see that that it's uh, that there will, there will be two people who are trying to suppress you, but this seems it seems like there is the better abstraction rather than modeling like individual policemen who will actually come and beat you, uh, because it doesn't actually matter which policeman it is, right? Even though they all have motivation <laughs> to do so because they are paid for that, uh, it's it's much more useful to actually think about the entity of of Russia or Russian government, the Russian police that will try to like change your preferences into into liking the current current direction. Uh, and uh, and like even though this is the ground truth, like the people are like the people are generating Russia. There is nothing. Russia is a virtual entity. But maybe it's, it's still it's still sort of like unfeasible to model it as a as just a collection of few million, few tens of millions of people. I think that's the point that the guy, the philosopher who did like this emergence and yeah, 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 yeah. was making. Yeah, and uh, even better is the Velikovsky Holon Parton structure because you can easily model Russia as you know these genes that try to propagate to the yeah, yeah. yeah. ukrainian territory yeah. basically and but it makes no sense right like you need to integrate the information along yeah. the meaningful uh yeah. paths can yeah. i can 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 i uh, when we are talking about uh, Russia, Russian society, unfortunately, there is more unity between authority and uh, common Russians. Uh, yeah, in, in comparison with Ukrainian society, when Ukrainians were all, all, always um, uh, not, not liking uh, us. As uh, authorities and um, trying to get rid of uh, all their wrong leaders, but uh, my my question is somewhat different. Uh, maybe it's in some other aspect. Um, what is the role of um, uh, rationality uh, in uh, in in uh, an uh, AI uh, system and predictability? Because uh, if we are looking at the sphere of human actions, uh, there is uh, a more unpredictability and uh, irrationality in actions, and uh, it's co it goes uh, mainly by in impact of values, uh, moral, uh, political, uh, etc. And uh, it seems uh, if there uh, if there contradiction, if uh, if uh, a uh, I system is relying upon uh, this rationality, predictability uh, notions. Uh, then uh, it uh, it's somewhat different from the uh, 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 human uh, actions. Uh, we we are just the dominating of the values make this unpredictability more and more uh, visible. Yeah, I'm not sure. So uh, I would say that that the, the human mind is making certain type of mistakes because of its like uh, computational limitations, because, yeah, yeah. because how we are both uh, mind structured and how we are how we are taught things. And the AI is also making mistakes. And the, the structure of the mistakes will be different. Some of the mistakes will be will be similar because, like, for example, trained on human data and like on it's is somehow primed to be interacting with human human culture and uh, society. Uh, but also it has its own its own uh, things that are very hard for it that you would not expect and it makes mistakes. Uh, this is true in general. Um, not sure what. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, okay. uh, American intelligence services uh -huh. made already two great uh, 
uh, false in prediction that Afghanistan and Ukraine, when they were giving us only four, uh, up to four days for uh, resistance uh, to a Russian ag aggression. So, so it's also very vivid uh, sample of, of uh, unpredictability. I, I'm so sorry to, to interrupt you. Yeah, but I, I don't think this is like particular like relevant to the topic. Like, I mean, uh, prediction is hard. Prediction of like political system is like even harder because like war is like like anti-inductive, for example, because if you are able to like predict what's going on <laughs> in, in war, like you will modify your behavior based on that. So I mean, I don't think this is like particular problems like in, in any way like specific for like AI. Mm -hmm. okay, I see. Okay. Well, uh, I just like wanted to have a short remark on the on the slide that you are showing with the VR yeah, yeah. with the with the VR mm -hmm. stuff. I think what would be what might be actually rather inspirative and what might be actually maybe even like you know like rather interesting like for you know like playing mm -hmm. like getting some and stuff yeah. is uh, actually recalls me a lot to what uh, you know the discussions there were in you know, like evolutionary biology in like 1780s mm -hmm. about you know like yeah. whether the selection is at the level yeah. of like individual or species or whatever. Which in the end led to like you know Darwinism and you know like the concept that you know like basically let, like you know like relaxation of the idea of selection by basically you know like conceptualizing uh, what the like living entities are optimizing for. Yeah, I, I would love to talk about it. Uh, it's one of one of the good examples of the hierarchical agency, something like genes, then cells, then organisms, <laughs> then then groups of organisms, or like. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if species or or uh, animal types. Populations, like. populations are probably yeah. more. Yeah, or probably populations. Uh, so yeah, there. I would I would hope that uh, or to discover more models that people have thought of, thought about. And another thing that is sort of related to that uh, on the slide when we were, we were talking about the, the ecosystems of uh, like you yeah. know, like AI systems, I think you know like I think actually it's. Uh, you know, good idea to call it ecosystems, I, but maybe it's not a good idea to think about it in the same way as the ecosystems in like, you know, like ecology or human societies, because still the main difference is that you're like, you know, like in, in the real ecosystems, you have like, uh, like agents that necessarily have different goals, whereas like, you know, like in this, uh, in, 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 in the ecosystem, no, AI, oh. this is like top from all this. <laughs> the the like, question is more like what tools from ecosystems we can use and are relevant and what mm -hmm. are not. And it's it's a hard. It's not an easy question to see like which which principles and and uh, phenomena do translate well, which do not translate well, and which may trans may, may transfer depending on the design, and you probably want to avoid them. For example, like yeah. parasites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, also, also, I think like uh, in a way, like in this and uh, companies, they have also like different goals. Like by definition, like they want to optimize like their profit and like, not their. Like, Competitors' profits. And so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I think, in some sense, yeah, you can say that they have like all the same goal of optimizing profit, but actually the goals are like pretty. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's like it's like you know, like it's like different actors. Like you want this, like, yeah. you know, for for for, for themselves. <laughs> and if you have like you know, like system of interacting, yeah, I think it's it's, it's you know, like crucial to define like you know, like whether it's like a system that is supposed to collaborate into it something and like you know, like. Or whether it's like really like whether there are some like you know somebody who's like giving the, the motivations from 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 outside which is yeah but i think i think here the hierarchical agency like comes into mm -hmm. play like you can think in some sense that i don't know like different parts of her body are competing for the same resources like energy mm -hmm. or like oxygen or something like that and there is some superstructure like allocating like oxygen or like I don't know, blood to your like different <laughs> parts of her body and it's time to do it in a way which like kind of like works for the whole, but that you have some like competitive pressures. Yeah. And there's a question yeah, how much like you can think about like how much there is this like uh, I think it's like really easy to imagine in companies where like you have different departments and there's often like pretty strong competition mm -hmm. between the departments or like different groups like within a department and uh, yeah, like usually I don't know the top management tries to sometimes like optimize it so the competition is a good uh, mechanism how to, I don't know, come up with some ideas. But on other, other cases, it seems the company is kind of like uh, as a whole kind of paralyzed by the mm -hmm. internal competition. 
So, so in, in, in a way, in the hierarchical agency framework, I think some of this can be described as like how much power or like agentness the different powers of the layers of the hierarchy have, where you can imagine like some companies are like more like the, they're like I don't know, departments have a lot of freedom, or, and, and they can be like more competent and so on, and other companies could be like, hey guys, like you are like doing like exactly this, and like you shouldn't like overstep your like. And I think it's important. It could be like pretty important to understand this like more. And uh, yeah, I sort of hope that we can like import some like interest, interesting like pieces of like mathematics from other things, which would like help describing this in the same way as like game theory is like and all it's like follow up stuff is like describing for like uh, describing the the. Uh, yeah, like to go more like wild, like I would be excited to have like more formal notions of like, for example, the collective agent like being kind to its parts. Mm -hmm. So game theory like allows us to have like pretty formal like ideas about both like cooperation and conflict and detections and the intuitive understanding of the concepts like seem to match like reasonably well formal like formal versions of the concepts. But I think we miss sometimes something like okay, like how would you describe formally the fact that for example the super agent is kind of like nice to its like <laughs> parts. And I think this could be pretty important to be able to like describe this as something which you may want. And uh, my rough intuition is like if we are like able to just say it informally, we are in a much worse position mm -hmm. than in game theory. If you have game theory, you are able to design, like I don't know, like using like things in the design and stuff like that, you are in a better position to design equilibrium you want. Mm -hmm. But if you want this like equilibrium, where for example, like this, like composite agents are like more like like empowering to their like parts and like exploiting them, like I think currently just like like which with like mathematical language for it. So I think actually one of the inspiration that might come from the evolutionary biology is like you know like abstracting from like you know what is good yeah. when you cannot define it to you know like what is you know like stable or something. Yeah, yeah. Because that's something you can pretty much like. Yeah. Okay.